Well, thank you very much for a fantastic um, um, introduction and also for inviting me to give this, this, um, this presentation. And it's always my pleasure to, to, to visit India, in particular Kerala. This is my fav most favorite part of India because of really my friendship with Riju and my time that I've spent visiting various uh, colleagues. Um, and um, so I'm going to, today I'm going to, and thank you very much um, to, you, for your, um, your, to your department also for making this opportunity available to me to present my work. And today um, I'm going to um, talk about um, amplification of light in plasma through the Raman process. And now it's, um, it's um, uh, several years since, uh, since um, Chakaranda, uh, Chakaranda Raman uh, was uh, born. And this, is, this talk in many ways is dedicated to that. But maybe I should give you some background uh, about where we are. Um, I'm in, in Glasgow, uh, Glasgow um, and actually I'm at home at the moment because of the coronavirus, but, um, and um, Scotland is an interesting place because there have been many, many, many very creative thinkers that have made a huge impact on the world. For example, James Clark Maxwell uh, was born in Dumfrieshire in the south of, of Scotland, and he's buried there, in fact, as well. And of course, his work was transforming. Lord Kelvin, um, uh, uh, even though he wasn't born in Scotland, he, he lived his life in Scotland. And many major advances were made uh, experimentally. For example, James Hutton uh, proved that the world was much older than it, than it was thought at that time in 1700s. And the, uh, the mass of the world was, was measured near a mountain, the Shahalian, uh, uh, the mountain called the Shahalian Mountain. I think Riju may have been up it in his time, uh, in 1774, by looking at the deflection of a pendulum. And what I'm trying to do is not uh, work like them, but work in the same tradition of trying to do some new things. And I'm trying to use plasma in, in unique ways. So, so this talk I'm, is really to celebrate Chandra Sekhar's Ven Venkata's Raman's uh, 132nd birthday. I had to work that out very carefully, which is in a few days' time. And of course, my work is very uh, is very relevant to the ideas that he that he presented uh, um, around 100 years ago. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, amplification of light in plasma. Plasma is fully ionized medium. Um, and it's possible to move charge around using intense laser beams, or intense light beams. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the, some experiments that we've done to demonstrate this, to show extremely high gain, and also to even to show relatively high efficiencies, and also to use some modern methods like chirp pulse um, uh, amplification, which of course um, uh, the Nobel Prize last year was awarded for. Uh, to Donna Strickland and uh, Gerard Moreau. Um, and I'm going to basically present experiments. And uh, my colleague, Richard Isak, of course, participated in many of these experiments while he was with us many years ago. Um, and um, then I'll provide some conclusions and introduce you to our facility very briefly. Um, so um, there's a growing interest in using plasma as, as, a, as, a, as an amplifier of light because um, the, the latest generation of, of, um, of, um, of, of lasers <clears throat> are very large because of the damage, the, damage, uh, the, the possibility of damaging optical components. Um, and because, because plasma is already a broken down medium, you can use it um, to uh, both to reflect light, to amplify light, and to, to, to uh, change the properties of light just by through interacting with multiple beams in, in the plasma, basically making beat waves. And these beat waves then can drive many processes. And one of them is the Raman process by exciting a Langmuir wave. And it's possible to, um, to amplify light uh, uh, in very small volumes up to about 10 to the 17 watts per square centimeter. So this means potentially 
this is a new way of, of handling very high power beams. And all amplifiers of light are really ways of transferring uh, energy from one, one form into another form, into coherent radiation. And this is no different, and as you will see. And also, um, by exciting uh, plasma waves, one can get uh, undesirable uh, uh, properties, uh, undesirable uh, be behavior like exciting instabilities um, in, in, in a fusion, in inertial confinement fusion experiments, where you can, by scattering the light out, out of the target area, one can reduce the, um, the possibility of getting fusion. So the, me the, the medium that I'm going to be uh, discussing now is basically um, either hydrogen or helium, fully ionized. And um, because the intensities we work at are much higher than uh, 10 to the uh, 12, 10 to the 13 watts per square centimeter, this fully ionizes the, um, the, um, the, the gas to produce plasma. Now, plasma cons is, consists of electrons, a fluid of electrons, and a fluid of, of ions. Now, we regard the ions to be more or less stationary on the time scales that we, we're looking at here. Um, and these, these media can be either gas cells or gas jets, or even capillaries filled with hydrogen where we use an electrical discharge to ionize all the medium and all the gas inside the discharge. So the, the, the Raman amplification uh, uh, occurs when you collide two laser pulses in, uh, in, in, in plasma. Uh, and by, by arranging the frequency differences uh, uh, to, meet, to match the plasma frequency, this is the natural oscillation frequency of electrons in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a plasma, one can then resonantly, resonantly excite a plasma wave. Now, of course, uh, this is done through, uh, through the beat wave and the associated ponderomotive force. So, and because these intensities are quite high, the, uh, the ponderomotive force uh, of the beat wave, which is a, a wave which has got a periodicity of, of half the wavelength. And um, this is also uh, a traveling wave. If, you, if, one has, if the frequencies are not matched, if one of the, uh, the, the, the pump and the seed have different frequencies, then you have a, a traveling wave. And this, the, the um, ponderomotive force of this traveling wave, which is proportional to the, um, to the, 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 uh, the, the, um, the rate of the differential of the, um, of the intensity. So um, this is a very, str very strong force and forces the electrons out, out of the high intensity regions to make a plasma echelon or a, 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 um, a, Bragg, a Bragg scattering structure. structure. And this Bragg st structure uh, can then backscatter uh, one of the waves into the other wave. And generally when you t have a high intense, higher frequency uh, pump wave and a low frequency seed wave, which have a frequency difference equal to the plasma, plasma frequency, then you can resonantly excite this, uh, this uh, plasma echelon. And this, the light that's scattered from this echelon, this echelon has a, a refractive index associated with it, just acts as a, um, a, a, a scatterer, which then uh, Doppler shifts the radiation to the right frequency to amplify the seed. And it's possible also to use chirp pulses, as I'll show you later, or a monochromatic um, uh, laser. Beam. This is a three, three wave. Uh, um, a three-wave interaction using two transverse waves, the propagating waves, and a longitudinal wave, which is the uh, plasma wave. So the um, the gain of these uh, these lasers, uh, these uh, amplifiers, can be very high. Um, and for the sort of intensities that we uh, work with, around 10 to the 15, 10 between 10 to the 13 to 10 to the 15 watts per square centimeter, in the pump pump uh, uh, laser beam one then can uh, have a very, um, uh, you can excite the, uh, resonantly excite the wave uh, with a, at a very high rate, which is at about a rate of 10 to the 13, 10 to the 14 uh, hertz. That's, uh, uh, and in one, meet, one millimeter, in poten potentially the, uh, the, the wave can grow by a factor of 10,000. It's a relatively uh, narrow bandwidth, uh, um, <clears throat> narrow bandwidth uh, radiator with very high uh, scatter very high 
gain, and this can <clears throat> lead to a, um, a, a pulse which, uh, which is amplified and can stretch. And if one can absorb all the radiation, scatter all the radiation from the, from the, from the pump, one can get a short pulse. Um, and, um, but at small signal, uh, the, uh, because the, 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 the bandwidth is extremely narrow uh, and the gain very high, uh, you, can, you, ex you, ex you excite, you scatter a long pulse backwards. Uh, in this nonlinear regime, which is what we call the, um, the pump depletion re regime, as you can see in the figure here, uh, the, um, you can get a very short pulse. So this shows you the, how the injected uh, uh, C pulse, which is in red, uh, grows uh, and is amplified at the expense of the pump pulse. And the pump pulse is then fully depleted and, and, and leaves behind a plasma wave. So this is a, uh, the seed goes in, uh, it collides with the pump, produces the beat wave, it resonantly excites the plasma wave, and then scatters the radiation with Doppler shift, Doppler shift, Doppler shift frequency into the seed wave. So um, high power lasers uh, now are reaching uh, pa peak powers of uh, up to pet petawatts, 10 petawatts, uh, highest power at the moment. And uh, this is the technology, conventional technology is still based on the choke pulse amplification technique, um, which has, uh, as I mentioned to you, damage, a, a pos a, uh, a, the, the um, limitation of damaging the optics. So the, the, the optics has to be very large and very expensive. These, these lasers are extremely expensive. Um, and plasma-based amplifiers by scattering uh, uh, a, um, a, a a long, long pulse into a short pulse, one can avoid uh, the damage of the components because effectively you have a medium which you throw away after every shot and it's only limited by uh, wave breaking of the waves that you excite in the, in the plasma. So you can directly amplify and compress short pulses. So, um, and the two regimes are um, the linear regime where the power is very low and at this, uh, the um, the the um, the pulse you excite a long pulse, and this pulse stretches, uh, and because the the the, the centroid of the pulse tr travels along at the half the speed of light, you get a long a long pulse scattered back. In the nonlinear regime, uh, as, as you excite the wave, you deplete the the plasma, and this leads to um, a, a, um, a limitation of the amplification, so you can amplify uh, uh, very short pulses with very broadband amplifying medium. So, um, so just to give you um, some of the, uh, uh, the, the results that have been obtained to date, uh, I'm just quoting mostly my results here, but some other groups, uh, I'll, I'll mention them as well. Um, so we've been able to amplify um, picojoules to hundreds of millijoules to almost the joule level uh, by injecting 150 picojoule uh, a pulse into plasma, we can produce 100 millijoules of radiation in a very short pulse. We can put in 100, 500 femtoseconds pulses that can compress to about 20 femtoseconds. Um, and we've been able to show that the medium itself has an intrinsic efficiency larger than 10%, and other groups have measured uh, directly measured the efficiency of around 6.4%. Um, but the, um, the, there are several phenomena which saturate the, uh, the, um, the, me the medium, the amplifier, and one of the most important ones is wave breaking. So this basically limits the maximum, uh, the maximum uh, intensity that you can, you can operate with. But I'll show you that it, it's possible potentially to go to break this. So one of the first uh, uh, experiments uh, would, would carried out was using a, um, a, uh, a, uh, a 100 joule laser, which was collided with, a, with this uh, very short um, pulse of, of picojoules um, in, in the plasma to produce the beat wave. The, these are laser pulses of the order of 10 picoseconds colliding with a picosecond uh, seed pulse. And to produce this echelon, this uh, Bragg grating in the plasma, and um, to ensure the um, to ensure that uh, you meet the Raman resonant condition, uh, we uh, frequency shifted the seed, 
to uh, to 1.14 uh, uh, microns, with the pump being around 1.05 microns, and we were able then to match the um, match uh, the, the plasma frequency when the density was around 7 times 10 to the 18 electrons per cubic centimeter. <clears throat> so these experiments are actually quite difficult to, to do uh, yeah, um, because high power lasers are very hard to, to, um, to, um, to handle and, th and this is one of the reasons why not many experiments have been done on this around the world. So just to show you uh, some of some, some results, if you look at the, um, the bottom left-hand uh, figure, this shows you uh, the measurement. These are, are just normalized to the, to the intensity of the laser, uh, where um, you can see the, um, uh, the, 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 the initial spectrum, which stretches between uh, around 1.1 microns and 1.15 microns, um, and you get amplification at the, at the Raman fre frequency or the um, frequency shifted uh, wave with the Raman frequency. And, um, and you can get amplification. The, the bandwidth of the, um, um, you, uh, the other thing is that the pump laser can scatter off uh, fluctuations because the gain is very high in the plasma. As I told you, the gain can be um, up to um, uh, 10 to the, um, 10 to the, uh, 10 um, per, uh, per, me per meter, uh, about 10 to the 8 per, 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 per millimeter, um, one, can get, one gets amplification of the, the fluctuations. So the, the fluctuations in the plasma will scatter the pump back. So you get a noise background. Um, but that has a relatively, um, a relatively um, broad bandwidth of around in this case about 50, 60, 60 nanometers, whereas the, um, the amplified signals for a seed, <clears throat> which has only a few, about 10 nanometers, you get this amplification of these pulses. Um, and uh, <clears throat> so it shows you here by um, uh, injecting a 10, uh, a 10 uh, nanojoule, um, a 10 nanojoule uh, seed, seed signal, one can get amplification uh, uh, up to, depending on, for 100 joules input, one can amplification up to about 0.1, around 0.1 to 0.2 joule, uh, joules. That's a, a ten, eight orders of magnitude, and this is uh, <clears throat> many times larger than you'd get in, in a titanium sapphire amplifier. Um, and if you, uh, if you only have the pump, you can see that you get a lot of backscattering, so about half of the radiation uh, uh, is comes from the spontaneous scattering from the uh, from the plasma from the plasma fluctuations, but you can still get uh, a significant amount of energy um, being amplified due to excitation of a coherent wave. Um, and um, <clears throat> what's also interesting is that this can be quite a, an, an a, a efficient mechanism, and we were able to show that the medium itself uh, can um, not only amplify light, light with a very high factor, which is about 100 times higher than in a titanium sapphire laser or a glass laser, uh, and the gain length is 180 per centimeter. So, um, and this means that you can get to um, extremely high gain. So, for example, we've been able to measure eight orders of magnitude growth. So, going from, from picojoules to nearly a joule level, or <clears throat> um, well, from about a nanojoule to about a, a, a nearly a joule level. Uh, <clears throat> um, and um, it, by measuring just the spontaneous backscattering of radiation, um, one can then estimate how much, <clears throat> how much energy can be scattered back by the plasma. And what we've measured here is just by looking at the, the backscattered light without having the seed present, we're able to show about 10% of the energy is backscattered uh, into, the, into, uh, into the seed direction, or without the seed there, of course. And you can, you can backscatter joule level radiation backwards. So you're putting in about 50 joules in this particular case, so between 30 and 50 joules, and you backscatter about of the order of uh, a joule or so um, um, back. Um, and um, <clears throat> but the gain, 
the gain bandwidth is, is, is very narrow in the linear regime. Um, then you can get temporal broadening, as I mentioned to you. And, um, <clears throat> and one of the ways of, of, um, of <clears throat> using this very narrow bandwidth is to use a, chirp, a chirped pump pulse. What the chirped pump pulse does is it produces a, uh, a swept uh, resonant region um, and therefore, it fixes the, it limits the overall gain of the system and amplifies all the frequency components at different positions, as I'll show you. And you get the so-called super radiant scaling. Um, <clears throat> so, um, um, what, you, what, what happens is that um, you have a spatially and temporally uh, uh, um, distributed uh, gain where you have the resonance met only in a, tar in a, in a narrow region in space and in time. And you can then scatter for different frequencies at different points, at different points through through the plasma. And so this chirp pulse amplification works in a slightly different way to uh, to with a, a for example compressor in a in a titanium sapphire laser. Here you're using the medium itself <clears throat> as a compressor. So. Um, and uh, what you're able to show that the uh, it limits the interaction time to uh, to, a, to a, a short a short time, and over this time you amplify only amplify one frequency uh, range within the 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 Raman uh, the band the Raman uh, range uh, bandwidth range, um, and um, so you can see uh, here um, what happens is that seed goes in here and the pump is chirped let's say from from blue to to red to red, and the seed which had, contains all frequencies. Will only be resonant at a different one frequency. Will only be resonant at, at different points. So, so what happens is that um, you get the scattering region, spatio-temporal distribution of the gain. Um, and um, so, to do these experiments, these were done at Strathclyde. Um, we collided a chirp pulse. Uh, um, we've, we've done several experiments that. We've done uh, colliding a 100 picosecond uh, chirp pulse, scattering with a very short uh, a seed pulse of the order of 50 to 100 femtoseconds. And uh, we were able then to see the, this, um, this amplification factor. So what happens is if you look at the seed pulse as it propagates through the, the plasma, what happens is that uh, you, you generate a larger Fourier component. You, you add Fourier components, so it's like doing a Fourier transform on the fly, uh, what happens? You add more more Fourier components as you propagate through, and then the pulse will compress as you add more and more Fourier components. So the all the Fourier, all these uh, the radiation each Fourier component comes from a different region of the of the pump pulse, a different region of the medium, and you can get this very short pulse being amplified. And it has the so-called super radiant scaling, just as in Dickey super radiance. The intensity propagates. Uh, the intensity grows. As, as a, a, a function of the square of the propagation distance, the pulse length reduces the inversely with the pop propagation distance, and the energy grows proportional to the to the um, to the uh, propagation. So in this case, the figure there I show shows the the field amplitude growing. So of course, the square of it would be a, a, a quadratic growth. So we're able to show that this is the case. We've been by by varying the um, the uh, the laser intensity, we were able to show that that scaling uh, scaling applies the chirp pulse amplification. So, um, and what's interesting here is you can amplify very very uh, uh, broad bandwidth pulses as long as you've got all the frequencies available in the pump. One can then transfer those frequencies into the seed. And uh, but the, for this um, for the experiments we've done, the efficiency has been rather low because you really need a very intense pump. We didn't really have. At that. At that time, but nevertheless, we are able to show um, a, a factor of uh, between four and ten, and fifteen later late, later experiments, um, and um, so we we proved the proved the principle, and so now it's just really a question of going to higher intensities. So, um, uh, but one of the uh, one of the challenges is uh, uh, is the saturation of the amplification. Um, and um, what we find is that the, the gain will saturate at higher, at higher pump, pump intensities, and that's mainly due to wave breaking. So the plasma wave, which has a particular phase velocity, will break in on itself. 
and that will limit its uh, its its coherence as 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 it as 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 you go to high intensities, um, you get more more electrons with higher velocities, and they break break in and and damp out the wave, the plasma wave. Um, and um, but that's not a complete tragedy because um, you can take advantage of the breaking of the wave um, by uh, detuning the, the plasma wave. So if you start at the very high intensities, you can move away from the Raman regime and you go to what they call the Compton regime. The Compton regime is like in a free electron laser, except it's in the laboratory frame where the electrons are uh, treated independently and they bunch directly in the ponderer motive force of, of, of the beat wave. So, um, and one of the things we look, looked at also is colliding two short pulses in plasma. And by doing that, uh, you can gen generate the beat wave only at the position where they collide, two short pulses. So you can sample by, by scattering uh, both into the Stokes and the anti-Stokes uh, wave. You get absorption of radiation and amplification of radiation by measuring the, the, the frequency difference between the, the peak and the trough one can actually get direct measurement of the plasma density. So we were able to show measurements over four centimeters, uh, the measure the density of, of the plasma inside this thing, just by changing the delays between the pump and the seed. Um, and um, so this, this illustrates here uh, how uh, uh, by uh, the pulse, seed pulse propagating through the pump pulse, you, you amplify more and more uh, Fourier components, add more and more Fourier components, eventually you get this very, very short pulse. So you get the super radiant scale, scaling. Um, and, um, and you can get about, as I said, about a few, uh, uh, a factor of between five and 10. So, um, so what we've also done is to go to high intensity, so the pump pulse, we've used energies of around three to four joules um, and in this case, we have a, a shorter pulse uh, with, of around 10, uh, 6 to, to 10 picoseconds and a shorter interaction region, interaction region of just a few millimeters. And uh, so we were able to demonstrate this and we were able to show uh, that the, the, um, the Joe pulse amplification also works at, uh, at higher, um, at higher, uh, um, uh, higher pump pulse intensities. And also, if you vary the, because the, the in this case, the, uh, the uh, probe pulse or the seed pulse is, is uh, fixed at a particular frequency. Um, and if you vary the density of the plasma, you can tune through the resonance uh, between the, uh, the, uh, the sort of the Raman resonance. And you can see here in this figure here uh, that for particular densities or particular backing pressure, which is very proportional to the density of the plasma, uh, you're varying between uh, it's about 10 to the 17 and 10 to the uh, 19 electrons per cubic centimeters. And over a, a certain finite regime, you get Raman amplification. And you can see between the dotted lines, you get Raman amplification. But you, you notice that you get amplification outside the band here. And this amplification uh, is due to, this, um, to the, uh, the Compton effect, where this behaves more like a free electron laser. So the ponderer motor force will directly drive the electrons and the the um, and not rely on the resonance uh, Raman effect. So we are able here to to amplify um, uh, seed pulses, input seed pulses of about 13 millijoules, to amplified um, pulses of about 100 millijoules, and these are very very short pulses. Um, and you, what you see here uh, is uh, the a frog trace. This is the temporal uh, a, speci a, a temporal measurement of the of the sh amplified pulse. You can see the seed pulse. The initial seed pulse is about 100, around 100 or 200 nano femtoseconds, and you can see as the as the uh, the seed pulse is amplified. So you've got this factor of of um, about 10 or, or 20 amplification, and you're getting into what they call the Compton regime. So you're producing a structure, a fine uh, temporal structure in the um, the pulse, uh, the the, uh, the amplified pulse of, with um, with a time scale of around 20 femtoseconds. So this is this time scale is is just related to the the bounce time, the the the, um, the bounce uh, frequency of of electrons trapped in the ponderer motor potential. 
Um, and um, so we've done a series of simulations. So simulations are, are an important part of, of these, um, this work. And we've used uh, Blasov uh, simulations. This is uh, modeling the um, evolution of distribution function of the charged particles in a six dimensional phase. This is phase and position, uh, phase, sorry, momentum and position. And one can then follow the, uh, the interaction. Uh, and we can see here that you get amplification at the, at, the Raman, at the Raman frequency and potentially also the Compton frequency. So, so, um, so the conclusion uh, of, um, is that uh, plasma uh, can, has the potential to backscatter uh, about 10 or maybe even up to, theoretically, you can almost scatter about 90%, but experimentally we've been able to demonstrate um, the scattering of the order of 10 10 pick, uh, 10 uh, percent or even more than that um, and uh, we've been able to show that you can amplify short pulses either through um, this um, uh, pump depletion regime or the chirp pulse amplification where you distribute the, the frequencies in space and time inside the medium and also at very high intensities you can go into the kinetic or the Compton regime <clears throat> which allows you then to continue amplifying uh, radiation without having to worry about the, the wave breaking because in a sense the wave <clears throat> the wave breaking is part of the physics the Compton regime because the the trapping of particles in the polymotor potential is a sort of wave breaking <clears throat> and um, and all that that does is it, it, it truncates the back of the the optical pulse whereas amplifying amplifying the front of the optical pulse so that's where you get this super radiant scaling as well um, and um, so we are, are, are and, and also we've been able to use it as a diagnostic tool for the measurement of the local plasma density. So you can think about if you transfer this to other types of systems, for example, fusion related uh, plasma, you can think about in a tokamak, if you collide two, two laser pulses locally in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a tokamak, with, with suitable frequency laser pulses, you can then directly me measure the local plasma density. Um, and to investigate uh, all this further, um, I, um, <clears throat> uh, I've set up a, a facility called the Scottish Centre for the Application of Plasma-Based Accelerators, called SCARPA. Um, and um, this is really an extension of my earlier work that Riju uh, Isak um, was a central uh, person um, developing this with me many years ago, 20 years ago nearly. Um, and uh, one of the things, the focus of, of what we do is on applications. So what we want to do is to utilize, to, to harness these plasma waves <clears throat> um, by exciting them with, with laser beam to produce uh, other frequencies. For example, um, in the Raman, we'd Raman shift, a very small frequency shift, but we can also have a very large uh, shift uh, in a free electron laser. You have a, also a Doppler shift and in that case, you can Doppler shift from, from the uh, 10 to the 15 hertz visible radiation <clears throat> up to into um, with uh, angstrom or shorter wavelength uh, radiation. So, so uh, uh, we also uh, use the medium to amplify, to accelerate particles. These waves, which of course have a dial some dielectric properties also are very large electrostatic waves. And you can use those electrostatic waves to, ac to accelerate particles. So we've been able to accelerate in the lab up to about 1 GeV. Other groups have uh, accelerated up to about 7 GeV. And you can use these with, with tabletop, uh, uh, tabletop lasers. And even you can even uh, make them work with lasers uh, of, of the order of uh, 10 millijoules. So for example, 10 millijoule kilohertz lasers could potentially be used to, to uh, produce electron beams and even uh, ion beams. At, uh, at high rep repetition rate. But what we do in our lab, where well, we, we have kilohertz lasers as well, sub terawatt kilo, kilohertz lasers. But if you focus them to a small spot, you can get the intensities that are sufficient to produce a high, a large quantum motor force. And you can study all this physics on a very small scale. But we have a 350 terawatt laser, we have a 40 terawatt laser, and we have a kilohertz and 10 millijoule laser as well. And we have three shielded areas <clears throat> because one of the challenges of working in this area, if you're accelerating particles, is that you produce hard X-rays, 
um, and these hard x-rays need to be, you need to shield personnel from them. So um, you can see the, the pictures at the bottom there are, are, our, are our beam beam lines that we're developing, and the picture on the right is our 350 terawatt laser. Um, and um, so the applications, we have very large range of applications. We have applications in radiobiology, looking at radiotherapy, for example, very high energy beam, electron beam radiotherapy, ultra-fast probing. We can produce at a second extra uh, X-ray pulses, XUV pulses, high resolution imaging and, and probing of dense matter. We can produce photons directly from the plasma out to, um, out to about 10 MeV <clears throat> through Bram strolling using an electron beam produced by the, the, the laser accelerator. One can produce uh, uh, um, uh, uh, gamma rays uh, to very high photon energies. Uh, and you can use those gamma rays to, to produce um, radioisotopes for, for, uh, for example, for uh, PET, PET, uh, PET um, positron emission tomography. And also you can use these pulses for detector development because the X-rays and the particles, you have a very wide range of particles. And also the, the, the currents, the peak currents, and the the uh, uh, and the um, the energies in these uh, these particle X-ray beams can be very large. We've been able to show that you can produce uh, um, joules of energy in the electron beam, uh, uh, and therefore you can you can use them for damage testing. You can also accelerate protons and and you can produce positrons, and um, so you produce a wide range, a sort of toolkit of of accelerator. And the source size is very small. You're talking about source sizes of the order of tens of microns. And um, so this, um, this type of project has involved over the years, involved many, many uh, collaborators. Um, and, um, and also our team at the moment, we are about uh, 15 or 20 people. We have other collaborators at, at, the, uh, at, at the university as well. Um, and um, we have collaborated widely. And as I said, we have a collaboration with Richu Isak um, in Cochin. Uh, and we have uh, collaborated with, with uh, many other groups around the world. Uh, radiotherapy with the Mer American group, for example, um, and we work also with Eli Alps, this is the extreme light infrastructure in the three centers in, 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 the, in, the, in, in Central Europe. Um, and we have obtained uh, support from um, many uh, bodies, Scottish Funding Council, EPSRC, and CSO from the Scottish funding as well from the EU uh, and also from the STFC, that's another research, uh, research council, and also from an enterprise organization in Scotland, Scottish Enterprise. And so I'd like to finally th thank you all for listening to me and, um, and um, I'm open for questions now. Thank you.